Welcome to the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. Happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. You've been sitting there so quietly, being so good. Um, I think you deserve a treat. Um, I don't know who's in charge of that, but somebody better get on that. Um, it was absolutely still just before the live stream came up moments ago. Um, nobody making any kind of ruckus, not even Raj, which is amazing. <laughs> it's, it's a new month. We're going to celebrate uh, with some new music. We've got a great message, a great speaker today. I'm so glad you joined us. Welcome to all of you tuning in today. Let's sing together one of my favorite songs by Paul Williams, Rainbow Connection. Happy 4th of July. Welcome to everyone here in person and all of us, all of you joining us online. My name is Sue Gardner and I affirm that all people are welcome here at our spiritual center. The practitioner doing the reading and prayer this morning is Selena Ba. The practitioner holding high watch is Farrell Zeman in the back. Uh, at High Watch, Farrell will be holding our service in sacred space and sanctity for the speakers, the musicians, and everyone who takes part today. Our center is a spiritual community 
that teaches a philosophy for daily living based on spiritual principles and practices that are universal among religions. We honor all pathways by, uh, by which people seek and know, to know the divine, and we work on our individual consciousness so we can help make the world a better place. I invite you to say the following purpose statement with me. Is it up there? Oh, uh, we are an open, welcoming, welcoming community, community, celebrating our divinity, divinity loving our humanity, and nurturing our journey of spiritual discovery. Our safety precautions for the coronavirus are the guidelines put out by CDC. They allow fully vaccinated people to not wear a mask at any time. We request those who are not fully vaccinated to continue wearing a mask, that those who still feel safer wearing a mask to do so, and that all operate with integrity and that no one is ju judging the, the choices of others. Our theme for this month is Pulled by Vision, and the topic is We Hold These Truths. Today's speaker is Reverend Sunshine Day, and next week's speaker is Reverend Linda Brewer. If you are working, if you are looking for more information on our center, our website is a great resource. If you happen to miss a Sunday speaker or want to hear the message again, the videos are all on the website. You can also find information about Ernest Holmes, and you can sign up for our newsletter. And the website address is www.spirituallyfree.org. There are two really great events that are happening in the next while here. And I'm, the first one I'm going to really spend extra time on um, because it is such a big deal. And that is in two weeks, on July 16th, 17th, and 18th, Reverend John Ogden will be, Auden will be here uh, as a candidate for our new minister. He will, be, he will be speaking on Sunday morning and then in workshop again in the afternoon. And there will be a lunch with that workshop. Um, and then on uh, Saturday, before that Sunday, there's a social event in the afternoon. And we really want everyone to meet and talk to uh, Reverend John. Um, this, is, this is an important happening here. Uh, a senior minister is important to all of us. So we are all in this uh, weekend activity together. Uh, we need everyone to meet him and spend some time with him, since he may be the person we are looking for to serve here as our senior minister at Salt Lake City. During that weekend, two weeks from now, there are three times that I'm going to ask for some volunteers that we need some help with the food service. There's food service on Saturday noon, and then on Saturday afternoon, and then again on Sunday. And um, it's just set up and clean up. So it's, it's the, food, the food will be there. We just need some help. So there will be sign-up sheets. As a matter of fact, they're out there now to sign up to, to help uh, and on one of those times or whatever fits your schedule. But it will really be great if you would volunteer. Um, the specific times are out there. So if you you know, need to put it on your calendar, um, it's, it's out there. Um, also, on Sunday of that weekend, um, we, need, we need to know how many people are going to um, attend the workshop so we know how much food to order, actually. So um, that's really another uh, important sign-up sheet. It's out in the lobby. Um, that's a, it's a love offering, so there isn't when you sign up. There's not. We're not. It's the love offering on the Sunday of the event. So this is just to find out who's going to be there, so we'll know not how much food to order. Okay. Um, the second thing is on August, let's see here, August 28th and 29th is our 50th anniversary celebration. And um, Rob Ekman, I'm, I don't know if Rob's here, but I think he is, um, uh, but you can talk to him. But I'm also going to uh, give you some information which he gave me uh, because we need to get started on some of the activities for that. It's not until August, at the end of August, but we want to start with some of these things. It's, uh, it'll be, the event on Saturday will be in Murray Park, 
and we need your help to gather old photos. Now, see the old photos. The 50 years is quite a while. So, so if you have old photos of the center, of the people, of the ministers, of the practitioners, of the fun, fun activities that we've done, um, all of those would be fabulous to have on display for when we celebrate our 50th anniversary. If you have paper photos, they will need to be picked up. And uh, so we'll t talk to Rob about that. Uh, because uh, he, we want we want if they're available and they're ones that you want to show, we'd sure like to have them. And also, if they're in your camera or if they're in your uh, your phone, uh, you can you can email them to us at uh, office .assistant at spirituallyfree.org. And the deadline for those photos is actually in two weeks, so now would be a good time to start looking for them. Um, and also, and again, it's, it's not to the end of August, but we need help with um, putting it, uh, setting up and, and taking it down for that event. And I believe that uh, Rob has a sign-up sheet for that as well out there. Um, so let's see. What is next? Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, our ministry is founded on prayer. Our prayer practitioners have completed two years or more of sacred training in affirmative prayer. If you would like a practitioner to pray for you or someone else, you can put a request in the prayer box out in the lobby or you can make a request on the website. Now, I invite you to go inside as we prepare to hear a reading and centering music before Selena Ba leads us in prayer. Good morning. This reading is actually adapted from two readings that I thought went well together and I couldn't decide between them. So the first one is Alice Walker, Living by the Word, and the second is Peter Santos, Everything I Wanted to Know About Spirituality but didn't know how to ask. Some periods of our growth are so confusing that we don't even recognize that growth is happening. We may feel hostile or angry or weepy and hysterical, or we may feel depressed. It would never occur to us unless we stumbled on a book or a person who explained to us that we were in fact in the process of change, of actually becoming larger spiritually than we were before. Whenever we grow, we tend to feel it as a young seed must feel the weight and inertia of the earth as it seeks to break out of its shell on its way to becoming a plant. Often the feeling is anything but pleasant. But what is most unpleasant is the not knowing what is happening. Those long periods when something inside ourselves seems to be waiting, holding its breath, unsure about what the next step should be, eventually become the periods we wait for. For it is in those periods that we realize that we are being prepared for the next phase of our life and that in all probability, a new level of the personality is about to be re revealed. The spiritual freedom we seek cannot be found by grasping at it, retreating to, or protecting our perceived safe places. Our freedom lies in remaining open continuously, not only to life's changes, but also to the divine light within us and others. This is our choice. Although often perceived as a weakness, being open and surrendering to the experience of the present moment is our greatest strength. By authentically living life in the now, we submit to the divine guidance where we find the freedom to see everything equally and sacred in truth.
of wholeness, this quiet place, that I recognize that one presence and that one power that moves in and through all of life, expressing today and always as divine right action, absolute love, perfection, strength, intelligence. And I know that I am part and parcel of that one, just as I know that same truth for each and every one of you. And all of creation, every person on this planet, every plant, every animal, everything. There is nowhere where spirit is not. It's within every cell of our beings and as we open and turn our minds to receive, we are filled to overflowing with the goodness of life that is ours by the sheer acceptance of it. So this day, I invite you to open your minds and your heart to receive to receive the love that is yours to receive and to receive the, the message and the music and this beautiful sunny day, our connections with each other, our growing together and learning. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this time together this morning. I'm grateful for this philosophy that opens my mind and heart to the greater yet to be. So I know this word's been spoken, therefore it's done. As together we say, and so it is. In our philosophy and, and many others, they are attuned to what we commonly know, this statement. Um, that we are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I wrote this song last year. It's called All That I Need to Be Free. It's, it's an affirmation that freedom 
sometimes feels obstructed or um, difficult to attain. But to know that it is part of our nature, that we have already been endowed by our Creator with this freedom. Um, all we need to do is attune ourselves to it, pay attention to that, and even live our lives as, as if we are free. And to know that for others, to know that for all, as we attempt and hopefully attain that happiness for the good of all. Let's sing together. All that I need to be free. pleasure to introduce our special music today and it's about time that this young lady stepped up and shined her light here um, as part of our band this has been just magic how this happened a dear congregant friend Karen Barney introduced Corinne Cummings to me and she said she, she plays flute well I had no idea how grand this musician is She's a teacher. She also sings. Um, she uh, not only teaches music, she teaches flute. Um, she's, she's very accomplished. She's been around the block, and it's so great to have her show a little bit more what she can do. We're going to um, play with her. Her first song uh, will be something that Leslie Monroe 
composed called Perfect Place. And uh, it, it's a beautiful way to show this soaring flute instrument. And please welcome our special guest, Corinne Cummings. A treat. <laughs> that was just fabulous. I, I really, really loved it. Um, I'm going to introduce our speaker. Reverend Sunshine Day was ordained in 2011 and loves her calling. She is a world traveler and speaker, providing spiritual tools and loving support in an effort to awaken humanity to its magnificence. She has spoken to our congregation virtually before with our positive response and sincere appreciation. She presents so we can feel the love that radiates from her soul. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, beloveds. How great it is to greet you in the name of love and to know that right where you are, God is. Oh, and to know that right where I am, God is. It is so good to be with you again, and especially on this uh, 4th of July, a day where folks are celebrating Independence Day, and we get an opportunity to look at our lives, 
look at our spiritual principles and our teaching, and most of all, take a look at what we've been doing all year. I mean, our yearly theme is timeless wisdom and evolutionary vision. And as we have spent the first six months really unpacking that and really looking at our ancient wisdom or our timeless wisdom, these tried and true uh, spiritual principles, and as we look at evolutionary vision, where we're headed, it is important for us to stay on track and to not lose sight of, of, of our principles, to not lose sight of the truths. Um, this month, our theme is pulled by vision. And I can just see um, myself being pulled by the vision, this pulling, this pulling that's happening. I'm being pulled by vision instead of being pushed by the pain. We're being pulled by the vision. And today's uh, topic is we hold these truths. And that, of course, comes from our Declaration of Independence. And so I really just want to like jump right into this because there's a lot to talk about in just a short amount of time. And I want to be sure that I'm really hitting on a couple of points um, so that as we look at this Independence Day and as we're celebrating that we're actually uh, that we know what we're celebrating and what we're doing. So I'm going to jump right in and uh, share my screen with you and actually go. You already got a sneak peek, but we're going to start right here with pulled by vision and we hold these truths. And it actually, again, comes from the Declaration of Independence. And here it is, the Declaration of Independence, July the 4th, 1776. It says that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so what I, what I want to highlight is, is that back in the day, uh, then uh, presidential candidate Kennedy was right there in your town, in your city there, in Salt Lake City at the Mormon uh, Tabernacle, right? speaking to this very thing. He was speaking about the 4th of July actually being a religious holiday because the Declaration of Independence spoke of God and that the this Declaration of Independence actually came out of religion and actually came out of this deep love of God and this desire to do God's will, which was really have independence for humanity, right? But it was just simply here in the United States so far. And when I think about the Declaration of Independence and we hold these truths to be self-evident, we hold these truths to be self-evident here in the Declaration of Independence, we at Centers for Spiritual Living also have a declaration. We have what we believe and what we believe is a is a declaration and it's the declaration of principles and so do we hold these truths do we actually hold these truths to be self-evident and here's just three of the declaration of principles that i want to highlight in today's talk uh, the first one uh, and of course we adopted this as an organization as a people we, we moved them from what Ernest Holmes believed, because when he wrote this, he wrote, I believe the ultimate goal, and we took these on, and now we say we believe, but we believe that the ultimate goal of life is to be a complete emancipation from all discord of every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. So emancipation means freedom. You know, that the ultimate goal of life is to have complete freedom from all discord of every nature. I am pulled by that vision. That is a vision that I am being pulled by. I, I would love to experience 
what it's like to have complete freedom from all discord, all the little stuff, all the big stuff, all the planetary stuff, the human discord, the discords even that happen within the individual self. Like that is a vision that pulls me and that really leads me into spiritual practice on a regular basis. Our declarations of principles also says that we believe that the unity of all life and the highest God and the innermost God is one God. Hmm. That is exciting. The unity, we believe in the unity of all life, that all life is united. And it reminds me of that poem uh, that says that you are my other me and that I am your other you. And when I harm you, I'm harming me. And when I love you, I'm loving me. That is the unity of all life, that that I am presence, that Atman, that Brahman, that Prana, that source presence that is right here in me is also in and as you, that that is the unity of all life and that the utmost God and the innermost God is one God. Therefore, we are one. We're not the same. But we are indeed one. And that's what namaste is, right? That the that the, the godness in me, that that life essence in me recognizes, sees, and honors that life essence in you. It's that unity of all life. And so it is indeed through my spiritual practice that I get to see the you and you and you and there's me and there's me and there's me and there's me in each and every thing in each and in every life and that there is a unity of all life. This happens in spiritual practice and we hold these truths to be self-evident. We hold these truths like this is the truth. This is what we say we believe. Um, so how is it that we actually get to that place of belief to where it is already acting as a law in my life, right? And then the last one that I want to highlight is we believe in the individualization of the spirit in us and that all people are individualizations of the one spirit. Wow. Wow. Right. So when I think about the Declaration of Independence and I think about our declarations of principles, I see God all in there. I see that we hold these truths to be self-evident. Right. Right. Life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And when we do that, I, I am moved then to think about our organization's vision, mission, and purpose. And we see a world that works for everyone. And we provide spiritual tools for personal and global transformation. And we awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence. And so when I think about this world that works for everyone, what are we really talking about? And in our global vision statement, you know, there, there are things in there that I get to agree with and I get to actually recognize that irrespective of what I think and feel about them, that this is what is necessary to create a world for, that works for everyone. So we envision a world where personal responsibility joins with social consciousness and in every area of the political, corporate, academic, and social sectors, providing sustainable structures to further the emerging global consciousness. So in all of these areas, all of these areas need a revamp so that in our corporate structures or political structures or socioeconomic structures that we create a world that works for everyone. See, how can I truly celebrate my freedom when others are not free? It's so interesting to think that, um, that there's such a thing as personal freedom. But when it happens for one, it happens for all. So as I become free, as I become emancipated, what then happens is that Folks go, wow, it could be done. It's kind of like the Olympic runners, right? Like once they break a world record, they go, whoa, it can be done. 
it could happen and someone could actually beat that. And so people actually try to make it happen. They practice and practice and they work out and they and they sprint and they do it in, in, a, in an effort to beat the world record. So imagine that we now have this mental equivalent of a world that works for everyone, a world where everyone has enough food, where everyone has shelter, where there's peace and harmony, that we can imagine a world where everyone has the right to to seek that indwelling power and presence and, and be fully emancipated. That is the freedom that I want to be able to celebrate, you know? that I wanna be able to go, wow, we did this, right? That our vision, mission, and purpose have been fulfilled in that. So how does, how does that happen? How does that happen for us? And how do we get to that place where we are sharing these spiritual tools for personal and global transformation. Well, we all know about prayer and meditation. We all know about our affirmations, about our sacred service. We all know about visualization. We all, we know about, about, about sacred giving and conscious giving. The question is, is are we engaged in it so deeply and so fiercely that we can't help but recognize that our life is the life of God and that we can't help but recognizing that all life is God and that all life is my life and that my life is the life of all. Like there's a, a, a spiritual practice that I engage in when I, when I go out walking, I, when I walk my dog or when I'm out, you know, doing my walk and, and I'm consciously looking at folks and going, that's my life, that's my life, that's my life, that's my life. And when I come across a life that I can't easily say that's my life, or there I go, that's me right there, that's where I get to do a lot of my work. You know, do we have those people in our lives? Or do we see them on television? Or do we think of them as, you know, people in other countries? Or maybe someone who's experiencing homelessness or hunger. Well, we can't easily say, tu eres mi otro yo. Like, you are my other me. And if you're hungry, then that means that I'm hungry. That means that I have yet to recognize and to be living in spiritual principles enough to eradicate and eliminate hunger and homelessness. That's the freedom that Ernest Holmes talks about. And when we say we hold these truths, do we hold these truths to be a lie? Or do we hold these truths to be self-evident? Because we begin to move from the I to the we. I want to share with you, uh, the four kingdoms of, of consciousness, or actually I like to call it the, the, the four stages of spiritual maturity. And we get to grow spiritually as we evolve and as we practice these principles in all of our affairs, as we take on the spiritual progress, we get to take a look at where we are. So here's kingdom one, and this is life happens to me. And when life happens to me, I'm a victim. This happened to me, that happened to me, the other thing happened to me, the other shoe's gonna drop, and then I don't even know what's gonna happen to me. And in order for me to move out of this victimhood, I have to release victimhood. And when I release victimhood, I come into kingdom two, or stage two, where life happens by me. Now, many of you have experienced life happens by me because you've learned how to manifest. You learn how to create parking spots. You've learned how to, how to create your palace or your prince or princesses. You've learned how to manifest and call forth things into your life. 
Now, in order for us to create a world that works for everyone, yes, we have to have this experience of life happens by me. But what happens here is that we're still the ones in control. And we're just playing small by staying in control and by simply manifesting this or that or the other thing, bank accounts, cars, homes. It's all great. And we need this step in order to know that it works. But at some point in our spiritual maturity, we must release control. And when we release control, we drop down into kingdom three where life happens through me. Now, what I'm going to tell you is, I didn't spell that like the proper way, but you get what I mean, right? Life happens through me. And that is where I actually surrender my control and I know this power, this presence, this life that is actually living as me is actually working through me and God can do more through me than I can do by me. And it's this idea of moving into this third kingdom consciousness where spirit is acting through me and moving and shaking and allowing me to wake up to my spiritual magnificence. As long as I am manifesting and in control, the bigger picture is not happening, but it is through my spiritual maturity and my progress that I allow spirit to work through me to manifest through me. I become the channel of peace. I become the channel of love. I become the channel of abundance. And I allow spirit to work through me. I, I allow the light of God to shine so brightly that people can't help but see that this stuff works. And oh, by the way, of course, when I release separation... I move into kingdom four and that's life as me where I recognize that there's nothing that separates my life from the life of God. And that is uh, where lots of us want to be and want to live where there's this seamless living. That is where I also imagine that we absolutely feel that emancipation from all discord. I think we get an opportunity to feel it when we're in, in stage number three, that life happens uh, through me. But even there, life happening through me, that's where we're uh, simply allowing spirit to run our life because it is the life of spirit anyway. And as we allow spirit to live freely through us, we can't help but experience the abundance, the joy, the peace, the power, the infinite intelligence, because we're just simply being that channel. And we're simply being so open to the creation, the co-creation that happens when we're at such a spiritual level and as such a spiritual maturity. So the question then becomes is, am I willing now to move from an I to a we? Because when I'm willing to move from an I to a we, then I'm in the power of God. So let me just uh, share one more, one more um, quote, maybe two more quotes um, here. Ernest Holmes says that our ignorance of the truth um, in our ignorance of the truth that we've misused the highest power that we possess. Imagine that we have a power and because we're ignorant, meaning ignorance of this truth, we hold these truths to be self-evident. We hold these truths, but because we've been ignorance, ignorance, because of our ignorance, because we've been ignoring the truth, we've misused this power that we have. And so great is this power, so complete is our freedom in it, so absolute the domain of law through it, that the misuse of this power has brought upon us the very conditions from which we suffer. Hello. 
discord, freedom, emancipation from all discord. We can be free. We can experience life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But we've been ignorant to the truth. We haven't dived into the truth and really marinated in this truth. We haven't held up this truth and recognized that our life is the life of God. To the degree in which we recognize that, that's the degree, to the degree in which we begin to, 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 to shuffle off the shackles and the, the, the handcuffs and the, and the ankle shackles that keep us bound. True freedom is knowing our life as the life of God. And it comes in those stages. Because as I know it for me and I awaken to that, then others can awaken to it as well. I, I love that Sherry Evans says that unity is the song of life. It's the grand theme underlying the rich variations that exist throughout the cosmos, right? And whatever we see, whatever we experience is only the manifestation of this eternal oneness, our unity, our oneness with all life. That's why I love that poem, Tu eres mi otro yo, you are my other me. Because when I remember that you are my other me, then I move into the we. It's no longer me, myself, and I. It's no longer life by me where I'm manifesting and producing only for myself. But I am consciously creating by allowing spirit to work through me, consciously creating an opportunity to awaken to my spiritual magnificence, the spiritual magnificence of you, the spiritual magnificence of everything. I mean, even Malcolm X knew this when he said, when I becomes we, even illness becomes wellness. <laughs> even illness becomes wellness. And so it is so important for us to engage in our daily spiritual practice. Because as we engage in our daily spiritual practices, prayer, meditation, visioning, as we hold these truths and we are reminded of these truths on a daily basis, that is the vision that pulls us. That is what we are being pulled by this vision of of freedom from all discord, of, em of emancipation from all discord. Like, that makes my socks roll up and down. I wish I wore socks so you could see them go up and down, but that vision that pulls me that we could actually experience emancipation from all discord, that we could experience that freedom, that just rocks my world that we can experience peace and wholeness and oneness and abundance as a humanity and that it's sure to be attained by all. The only way it's going to be attained by all is when we do our part. When we do our part and we're acting from the we, in other words, when I know that my part contributes to the part of each and every one of us. So as we celebrate this 4th of July, as we celebrate the independence of the United States of America, let us be mindful that we are not truly free until all of us are free, until we experience that emancipation from discord, until we simply open up our hearts and minds and recognize that there is no other, that there's only the unity of all life. I love and adore you. You are my other me and I am your other you. When I love you, I'm loving me. When you love me, you are loving yourself. There's only one thing happening here, and that is the life of God. And it is expressing beautifully and magnificently as each and every one of us. Let us see it. Let us be it. Let us awaken to this spiritual magnificence. Let us create a world that works for all. Until the next time, know that you are loved. Bye for now. So... 
as we finish up this from this talk, um, which gave me much to think of. Um, I've heard of these four um, levels of consciousness, and uh, and I know that we all have the ability to go in and out of any one of them at any in any given day. I can. Um, so let's just rest in this knowing of that one presence and that one power hmm, that moves in and through all of life. Absolute intelligence, love, power, compassion, and the wholeness of being. And just as I recognize these attributes of the one, I know that each of us are expressions of that one, whole and complete this day and always. And as we move into this day, that we do so with open minds and open hearts, looking for those examples of I am you and you are me embracing those that we meet as the one of us that we all are. Just another individual expressions of that one, but that we all have the same source and move from that source. And we just rest in this day, enjoying the rest of the sunshine and celebrations of freedom as we recognize and embrace the freedom within. So I just released this word, it's spoken, therefore it's done. As together we say, and so it is. our time of conscious giving. I first heard that term probably close to 30 years ago and um, started practicing. And um, just this last week, I've really had many times to celebrate and realize and embrace the changes that have occurred in my life in the last especially 20 years since learning this gift of conscious giving, the abundance in financially, friends, work that I have adored, um, all of it in many forms. So now is our time of conscious giving that means like everything else we do, it's a choice. We choose to give and we ch choose to give from an attitude of abundance, knowing the prosperity of the universe is already ours. So I invite you to place your gift over your heart or if you give electronically or by automatic deposit, bring your gift to mine and feel the truth 
of what you say as we speak our giving affirmation. Divine love, as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Filled with gratitude, I let this be, and so it is. Here's some more from Corinne Cummings. Some beautiful classical music, yeah. Well, it's not rock and it's not jazz. It's Baroque. <laughs> Baroque is the period before classical and um, it's the time of Vivaldi, Handel, Bach, and Telemann. So I'm gonna play some Telemann, who wrote the 12 fantasies for flute and flute alone, no accompaniment. But I'm not gonna play all 12, I'm only gonna play eight and nine. Um, fantasy number eight is in E minor, and fantasy number nine is in E major.
some. <clears throat> See, some of us didn't know she had it in her. It's really fun to have people shine like that. <clears throat> we just had to push her a little bit. <laughs> nudge, nudge. Uh, what a blessed day. So celebrate your independence today. Uh, let's all stand together. Um, we have a lot to look forward to this month. Um, please be cool. Stay cool. Um, don't get sunburned. But enjoy, enjoy the outdoors. Enjoy each other. Um, enjoy the freedom that we are so blessed with. We're going to um, sing a new closing song. Um, some of it will be very familiar. Uh, I'm very excited to do this. We're going to combine a Daniel Naimon song called Breathe the Same Air with the peace song. So I <laughs> hope you enjoy it. All right. One, two, three, one, two, three. Same.